Welcome to the very first episode of Knit Together with Kim and Jana. I'm Kim. And I'm Jana. And we're coming to you from our very favorite local yarn shop, Pick Up Every Stitch. The owners, Felicia and Karen, very graciously open their doors to us and are allowing us to film here. But just so you know, we don't own the shop. We don't work at the shop. So you, you won't find us here. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but if you have any oh, questions... shopping! Unless we're shopping. <laughs> yes, we shop here. That was Felicia. <laughs> She said, unless you're shopping, we do that a lot. But if you have any questions about anything, uh, the yarns we talk about today that they suggest, um, anything behind us on the wall, if you need anything, then we'll put the link in the show notes to their shop and just contact Felicia and Karen and they mm -hmm. can help you. But um, Jana, first of all, why are we starting this YouTube channel? Um, short answer, COVID. So we used to meet together in person with a group of people who were interested in learning more about knitting and some knitwear designers and um, people who have been knitting for a long time, people who were just beginners, and we met in each other's houses. But um, we both have children and grandchildren uh, and our parents living with us right now, <laughs> and then COVID hit. So we have not gotten together in person since COVID. And we thought that this was a great alternative and a way to meet even more people. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do with the channel is, um, I mean, it can change over time, but right now we're planning to record an official episode once a month. That would be this. And then on the off weeks, we are going to film shorter videos. It could be things you ask us to talk about. One thing I'll probably do one on is my beautiful sweater that I'm wearing. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. But I could talk for an hour about this. So we'll do other videos in between. They won't be official episodes, but they'll be just more fun things. Basically, the whole premise of this is our favorite things. We knit a lot. We will not be sharing every single project no. <laughs> we knit. Um, if you want to see every single thing we knit, you can go to our Instagram pages. Mine is it is me knitty Kimmy, and Jana's is mine is knitmetician. We'll put the link. Anyway, um, there you'll see everything we're working on. But here we're really just going to share our favorite things, our favorite techniques. All the mistakes we make. <laughs> What's inspiring us? Yeah, exactly. Um, just so you know, a big part of this will be uh, about talking about mistakes. We did realize when we were holding our in-person knit togethers that new new knitters stop because they keep making mistakes. Mm -hmm. If that happened to me, I would I would never be knitting. <laughs> I have been knitting over thirty years, and I still make mistakes on every single project. So don't stop when you make mistakes. We're going to talk about mistakes. Um, what happens when you notice one? Do you leave it in? Do you take it out? Those kind of things. And, and that's why it's a hand knit. But anyway, we'll talk about that at another time. Um, we're so grateful that you're watching us. <laughs> and so we encourage you right now to grab your favorite beverage, coffee, tea, wine, <laughs> and your favorite project that you're working on. And keep listening. So I'm Jonna, and I'm a relatively new knitter. And unlike Kim, who's been knitting for decades, um, I've always been generally crafty and I do know how to crochet. I learned to crochet when I was little and um, I th I'm pretty sure my grandmother handed me a pair of knitting needles at some point. Maybe I was around seven, but I did not knit at all for the rest of, um, you know, for many, many years. And it wasn't until I got interested in a TV series after reading all the books um, called Outlander that I decided to pick up knitting needles. I saw one of the characters, Brianna, wearing this beautiful capelet, and I thought, I want one of those. So I went on to Ravelry, you know, searched for patterns, and saw some crocheted ones that I, I didn't love, and found a knitted one, and I thought, well, how hard can it be? <laughs> so I went to the closest yarn shop, and was directed to the bulky section and picked out a skein of yarn and was handed some straight knitting needles and made a capelet and I was pretty pleased with myself actually <laughs> and um, I don't have the capelet here because I gave it to my mom but um, we'll insert a picture yeah we'll insert a picture and like I said I used bulky yarn which was great for our first project you know something like this would be great um, a beautiful color because it worked up super fast, so it was super gratifying, you know, instant gratification. I was done with it in a couple of days, and I thought, oh, I can do this. So, 
here I am. And then I had a bunch of grandchildren to knit for, so that was also motivating. Did you say how long you've been knitting? Two and a half years. Yes. Yeah. So when you see throughout the episodes the things she's knitted, it's absolutely amazing. At first, supposedly, she was afraid of stitch markers, but her first <laughs> project story. had short rows, so yeah. <laughs> she's pretty amazing. Um, so, again, my name is Kim, and I started to knit over 30 years ago in Europe. I have no idea what the name of the shop was. I started to knit in German, meaning the lyrics, the, not the lyrics, <laughs> I'm a singer too. The words, <laughs> the instructions were in German. Uh, so when I moved back to the States, I had to ask people to teach me to knit in English. It was kind of funny. But um, this is one of the first things I knitted for my kids. Um, this was for my daughter. And uh, I, I did find the pattern on Ravelry. We'll link it. It's called the Dino Pattern by Peyton's. Is that how you say the name? Mm -hmm. um, and but it's so funny because it was published in 1987 and I did knit one for my son in 1988 when he was born and this was for my daughter in 1989. Um, it's obviously knit in acrylic um, but it's so cute and now I have, um, by the way, I didn't even say that, I have seven <laughs> grandchildren. I have five. <laughs> we love being grandmas. Yes. Um, I have three children. I have three children also. And I have one husband. I have one husband. <laughs> We're best friends. And we, we both have a parent living with us. Yes, we both have a parent yeah. living with us. So we have so much in common. But my four-year-old granddaughter is so excited to start wearing this after I film it. And it's, you know, it's just a, it, it, this is a, a worsted weight acrylic. Oh, it's pieced. Um, yes, this is my first, one of my first projects. I didn't know any better, and it has intarsia and embroidery and... These little doodads, uh, oops, sticking off of it. But um, you can use any worsted weight yarn you can um, that you like. Obviously, it's for a child, so maybe something more washable, but maybe not. And um, right near here, I have some Sandness Garn Smart Super Wash. Uh, comes in many colors. My son's sweater was knitted in primary colors, and obviously, this one is knitted in these pinks and purples. Um, but that was a super fun project to knit. And it was flat in pieces, seamed, and I did it. So don't be afraid. Right. Right? I, I would never have attempted that. But no, don't be afraid. But you did do short rows. <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of stitch markers, short rows. Or in, using more than one color. Yeah. Intarsia. Just pick something that you really want to knit and knit it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's actually a good point to talk now about local yarn shops. One reason we have such a good relationship with Felicia and Karen is because... John, I basically learned how to knit here. Between yes. being here a and lot of time here. <laughs> YouTube videos, there's a little round table that people sit at. They can just come. They bring their project. By the way, if you sit in a knitting shop and bring a project, make it be a project that you purchased in that shop. <laughs> knitting etiquette. Yarn knitting shop etiquette. Yes, etiquette, yarn right? shop etiquette. Um, but you just gather around and you knit. And, and that's how you... Um, learn new skills, you get help with mistakes. It's so great to have a relationship, a personal relationship with your local yarn mm -hmm. shop. You're not gonna get that help at a big, huge arts and crafts store. Um, it's just invaluable. You walk in the door, they know what you like to knit, mm -hmm. um, they know, you know, they just know, they get to know you and it just is so helpful. Anyway, I'm talking too much. <laughs> Um, so that's basically our introductions, and now we're going to move on to talking about a few projects. First, let's talk about what I'm wearing. Okay. This is my Helix shawl by Stephen West, and it was knit in John Arbin Exmoor sock. And I just, I love to make socks. I love sock yarn. I don't need an excuse to buy sock yarn. So I think I came in here and bought every color they had. <laughs> um... And then I went on vacation to Colorado, and I thought, what am I going to take on vacation? I need something, you know, kind of mindless. And, um, oh, I borrowed a book from my friend Claudia, and this shawl was in there, and I just thought it was beautiful. And, of course, it's meant to be sort of a scrappy project, which for me it wasn't. But, um, you know, I just randomly chose the colors. It's all garter stitch, so I really didn't, you know, need to worry about directions too much. It was the first time I did this Pico bind off. Um... Yeah, and it's a crescent-shaped shawl, and I'm still learning how to wear it, but I really love it, and it's super um, colorful, so I get lots of compliments on it. It's and gorgeous. I'm so it's my first shawl, and I really didn't um, understand that shawls are warm, and they keep, you know, the top half of your body warm, and they keep your arms free, so I'm, I'm a fan. So, yeah, so my first shawl, and I love it. Great. Thank you. I love that shawl. So, 
I'm going to talk about what I'm wearing, although let me just tell you, this is only like the fourth thing, maybe the fifth thing I've ever knitted for myself. We're trying to change that. <laughs> I knitted, my whole knitting career was for children, babies, things like that, but knowing Jonna has inspired me, and coming to the shop has inspired me to, to knit for myself. I'll also say here, um, I'm super, super, super motivated by in-store samples. I see a sample, and I want to knit it and I want the yarn that it was knitted in. So that's what I love here. You can't really see all the samples. We will do a store tour eventually, mm -hmm. but that motivates me so much. So as far as this sweater goes, I saw, um, I learned about Marie Wallen. She's the designer in another YouTube channel called Fruity Knitting that I'll talk about later. And um, I ordered this book, which is the Rowan 40 iconic hand knit designs and in it was this sweater and I fell in love immediately. This was over two years ago. Um, but here it is. You won't be able to see it really, but I just fell in love with it. So two years ago I ordered the yarn. We both ordered the yarn. She has a sweater and I do not. <laughs> From Rowan and the exact <laughs> colors that were suggested. One color had to be substituted because it was discontinued. but. Um, I waited two years to knit it. I was so afraid of it. I was afraid of the all over Fair Isle. Uh, I was afraid because I wanted to knit it in the round, but it was written flat. Most, a lot of Rowan patterns are knitted flat, and then you sew them to, together, which I'm not afraid of that, but uh, doing stranded knitting on the purl side, I really didn't want to take the time to learn how to do it. So I did convert the flat pattern into a round pattern with steaks. I'm not going to really explain what steaks are right now. I will do a whole separate extra video about this sweater. Um, but when you knit in the round with steaks to make a cardigan, for instance, you you include bridge stitches and then when you're all done you literally cut them. It's a little scary. But so this was knitted in the round with these extra stitches and I just cut them and then the extra stitches became my facing, my steek stitches. And then I steeked the front neck, I steeked the armholes, and I even steeked the sleeves. At the same time I knitted two sleeves. So it was sleeve, steek, sleeve, steek, and then I just cut them apart when I was done. Another thing I'll talk about eventually is that I never swatched in my life because I knitted for babies or blankets. didn't really matter. Made a size a little big so they could wear it longer. But since I started knitting for myself, I started swatching. And thank goodness because this fits perfectly. I mean perfectly. So I just love it. I love everything about it. It was super, super fun. I knitted it in six weeks. <laughs> uh, six weeks of knitting, one week of assembling. And I bought these gorgeous buttons here at Pick Up Every Stitch. They are um, textile garden brass buttons. I absolutely love them and they're perfect. Yeah. And that's my, it's called the Orkney cardigan and I love it. Thank you Marie Wallen for designing <laughs> it. Uh, and I did say it is knitted in Rowan felted tweed, mm -hmm. which they don't carry here, um, but they have started to carry tuku wool in this is only four but of the colors, but gorgeous colors. Gorgeous. And um, the same texture, that kind of sticky, mm -hmm. um, more rustic-y in a way yarn, which is perfect for steaking, perfect for Fair Isle. It kind of fills out the spaces so that when you, it looks like fabric instead of individual stitches. Mm -hmm. So um, this was knitted in 13 colors. So um, it's just so fun to choose them and figure out what you want. But anyway, that's my Orkney. Once again, this isn't really in chronological order. It's not in the order we knitted these things. It's just kind of our favorite things that we want to share in each episode. Um, so what I'm going to talk about now is my 2020 project. Um, again, it was, it was inspired by a sample I saw here in Pick Up Every Stitch. Um, and I walked in the very first time I ever came in the store and the sample was hanging there. And I immediately knew I had to knit it. And for a year or two, I looked at it every time I came in. And I thought I would, it was a children's sweater. I thought I would knit one for one of my grandchildren, but I have seven grandchildren. And so um, coincidentally, even before COVID hit in January 2020, I decided that year I was going to knit one of these sweaters for each of my grandchildren. So seven of them all together. Uh, so I bought, um, I picked out all the colors in January, and I purchased the yarn for the first two or three sweaters, and I started knitting. And then COVID hit, so what did I do but knit the whole time? So I finished the project. I knitted each one for each of their birthdays that year. So I knitted, um, let me see if I can remember. I knitted a size one, a size two, three size fours, a size six, and a size eight. 
And the colors I used, we're going to insert pictures um, in here, but the colors I used were the gray. If you look at the sweater, it's just the most adorable thing. Designed by Danny Sunshine Knits. Um, the gray was the common denominator with all of the sweaters, the common gray and the pocket liners. But it's just adorable. It has cables, it has stripes, it has pockets. I mean, what's the cuter than that? I absolutely <laughs> love it. I did make mistakes on every single sweater. <laughs> and someday when we talk about mistakes, I'll tell you about those mistakes. But here they are. Um, after I knitted all of the sweaters, I did knit them in the yarn that was suggested. I think the sweater was created for that yarn. Yes. Um, it's wall cut, cut. How do you say that? Wall cut? Wall cut fibers. Fibers opus nice. yarn. It is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, but it is hand washed. If you knit something for your grandchildren in this, they can wear it and have fun with it. It's very durable, but make sure their mommies and daddies don't put it in the washer and dryer. <laughs> but it's just gorgeous. Here's some other colors. I don't even think they had this purple when I knitted it. I would have used that purple. Mm -hmm. And you have a sweater for yourself made out of that. Yes, I made one. I'll share a sweater for myself once knitted out of that. But mm -hmm. um, after I knitted all of them, uh, I just took individual pictures of the children in their sweaters, but my daughter, who is an amazing photographer, took this picture, which I can also insert so you can see it close up. But when Felicia and Karen saw it, they wanted one for the shop, so I got it <laughs> framed. But there they are, my seven grandchildren, in their beautiful hide-and-seek sweaters. Adorable. Love it. Um, I loved knitting them. Uh, it was super fun. It never got boring. And... Um, Again, I'm just so grateful for the samples in the store because I would have never knitted it if I didn't see the sample. Okay, what are you going to share? All right. Um, so <laughs> when I met Kim, she was making baby blankets. Oh my goodness. Only baby blankets. Yeah. Lots of baby blankets. Seven grandchildren Big born blankets. in eight years, <laughs> and I made a blanket for each of them. I was in baby blanket yes. HE double toothpicks. Yes, yes, you were. <laughs> but they were beautiful, yeah. and so she inspired me to make a baby blanket. So this is my first baby blanket for my grandson who is now one. And so I thought I would finish it before he was born, but that didn't happen. And But I did finish it before his um, first birthday. And this is a free pattern on Ravelry actually. It's called the Cuddle Me by Manel. And I let my daughter pick out the pattern. I thought, sure, I can, I can do that. Uh-huh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do that. <laughs> Um, this is my first cable project actually and in the first row, I don't know if it's at the top or the bottom, but the first row, these are horseshoe cables and I did them incorrectly but you can't tell and I decided that I would leave it. So We call that a design element. Yes, then. <laughs> and honestly no one would ever know. And the border is this moss stitch which I had never done before and this horseshoe cable and these are just um, knit two togethers and slip slip knits and it was really actually a very simple pattern it was a six row repeat I was says able, the woman who's only been knitting for two and a half years I was able to memorize the pattern and this yarn is incredible it's the, it's another John Arbin I'm a huge fan of John Arbin it's the knit by numbers DK and it's a hundred percent it's actually a hundred percent organic wool from the UK and it comes in a hundred colors or more even and gradients of colors. It's just a stunning, um, stunning, beautiful yarn. Very affordable. It is not super washed though, so uh, needs to be handled with care. But, you know, that said, wool is super durable, like you said. It's antimicrobial. It's moisture wicking. You know, I just can't think of anything better for a baby. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. I absolutely love it. So, you started knitting garments for yourself, and I started knitting baby blankets. <laughs> We're switching places. We inspire each other. And that's another reason we wanted to start this channel, because we've learned so much from each other. We inspire each other. We laugh with each other. We cry with each other. We rip out with each other. <laughs> I went to her house once, and uh, she had all these unfinished projects that she wasn't going to finish. So I was like, can I rip them out? And I literally sat there yeah. and just started ripping. And it was the best feeling, because when you're unfinished project is staring at you, you know, and you're feeling guilty about it, the best thing, I mean, if you're not going to finish it, just rip it out and use the yarn yeah. for something else. It was very therapeutic for me, so yeah. thank you. 
I never paid you for that therapy session. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm the one who got a clean yarn room after that. So yeah, that we're all fun. set. All right. So now, since you were just talking about your John Arbin baby blanket, I'm going to talk about my current John Arbin project. I did start this um, one or two years ago. Uh, maybe it was just one year ago. Um, but I saw this on the Arne and Carlos YouTube channel, another favorite of ours. And um, I love flowers. I drive a flower beetle. Maybe someday I'll insert a picture of that if Jonna <laughs> lets me. But it is crochet. And uh, so right now it's crochet together with Kim and Jonna. Right. <laughs> uh, and I don't know how to crochet. I basically taught myself for this. There's only a few stitches though. I purchased this book. Uh, that wasn't necessary. The pattern is available on their website. But I wanted the garden mouse pattern, so she bought Yeah, the they knitted this, they designed this beautiful little mouse called... Magnus. Magnus, the mouse. And the only way to get the pattern, it was out of, it wasn't being published anymore. And it was just in this book. And so we ordered the book so we could have both. But then I started to crochet and realized that actually the instructions in here are in British crochet terms. And they're different from American. I knitted, I crocheted the first flower and realized it didn't look right. And so I converted everything to um, the U.S. stitches, and it worked. So, um, so I absolutely love it, and it is crocheted. It, it's supposed to be, again, a scrap project, but I don't have a stash. Uh, we'll talk about this. <laughs> this is a whole other subject. <laughs> yeah, and we really want to try to keep this shorter, introducing ourselves. But I'm a project knitter, and Jana is, for the most part, a process knitter. I see something I want to knit, I buy the yarn and I knit it and it's done. Other than vacation yarn, I like to purchase vacation yarn. Um, but even when I do that, I find a pattern that the yarn matches. And I, you know, I knit. Each, each bunch of yarn I buy has a pattern already assigned to it. Um, whereas, Jonna likes to buy pretty yarn <laughs> and, um, and she likes the whole, whole process of knitting and so sometimes she ends up with a few unfinished objects. <laughs> I'm all about the object. That's right. And she's all about the process. But anyway, off, off topic. <laughs> but um, this is, I usually only knit one thing at a time, but this is my other thing. And so I'm slowly working on it. I need 525 flowers. Right now I have 74. Um, I, I decided to buy the crochet hook that they recommended. Mm. And is it prim? Prim, yeah. Uh, it's lovely, but I don't crochet, so I don't even. Do you guys carry prim? What, what brand do you carry? We have them. We've got Chai Goo. Chai Goo. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love Chai Goo, too. Yeah. Um, but I didn't even own any, so I just ordered whatever they suggested. And um, I love it. It's really, really fun. But it is supposed to be a scrap project where you just they literally just pull a color out of their bag of scrap balls of yarn. That's and Pearl, by the way. <laughs> if you hear funny Pearl noises, puppy. <laughs> there's a dog, a yarn shop dog here, adorable Pearl, and she's... Um, very, very well behaved, but she's yeah. having she's a... She's probably ready to go home. Yeah. <laughs> so if you hear anything, that's not our right. stomachs. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it might be, too. That's what we're saying. We're right. blaming Pearl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's super fun, and um, I did use, like I said, the John Arbin Knit by Numbers. Uh, so many different colors you can choose from. Oh, yeah. The the majority of the yarn behind us. That, in, that entire Arbin. wall is John Arbin. Yeah. So... Um, if you don't have a stash, like I don't have a stash, a bunch of scrap yarn, I just went out and bought the colors that I liked. I don't even remember. Maybe it's 14 colors. I did use a random color generator for the first 74 flowers, and now I'm just going to go back and repeat and do those same ones again. And after you crochet the first and second um, round, then the third round connects them together. So I knit the first two rounds, and then I look at it, and I figure out you know, where that, those colors would look good and I just I just love it oh, there's it's Pearl. so perfect oh maybe she'll come over and say yeah. hi <laughs> and so that's my my flower blanket so uh, what are you going to share next um okay so spoiler this is the Stephen West mystery knit along it's the Stephen West MCAL for this year 2021 so if you want to look away I, I know it's sitting here on my lap but I won't show it in its entirety until I give you 
a, a couple seconds to look away. I'll say, okay, all right. So this is my first Stephen West MCAL, and this is... Wait, hold on one second. Since we might have new knitters listening, what is an MCAL? I know what it is, uh -huh. but what is an MCAL? So what does that stand a for? A CAL, a K-A-L, is a knit along. So mm -hmm. it's just a project that maybe a designer picks um, and a bunch of people decide to knit it all together at the same time. Um, could be people locally, can be people from all over the world. So this is an MCAL, and the M stands for a mystery, which means that the shawl pattern is revealed over time, over six weeks. So you only get a chunk of the pattern once a week. And this is, up to here is the first clue, up to these loops. Oh, let me help you which hold it. So I originally beautiful. thought looked like caterpillars, but I'm, I'm becoming fond of them, actually. And um, I We'll think... insert better pictures <laughs> so you can see better, but these little... They do look like caterpillars, how they, they do. And this, this striped part is the beginning of the second clue. And I'm a clue behind, so I'm thinking that it's cool that... Oh, it's not really a spoiler, then. Right, right. I'm a clue behind. It's not um, like you're telling the end but of I'm the actually, show. But because I'm a process knitter, I'm <laughs> I actually love that I'm doing something different every couple rows. And it's been super interesting. I'm doing things that I have never done before. And I'm using Holst Super Soft, which is a really rustic yarn, um, pretty inexpensive from Denmark, I believe. 100% wool, not super wash. Um, I'm assuming because it has lots of spinning oil on it that it's going to wash up and be super soft like the name. Yeah, it's a little... It's a little... Rustic crunchy. feeling, crunchy. crunchy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, it's outerwear. It's not going to be next to your skin. So. No. And the pattern actually has lots of recommendations. You could make it out of, you know, exquisite cashmere, alpaca. Because this was my first knit along, um, mystery knit along, I, I wanted to play it safe and buy something that was, you know, budget friendly, just in case I loved the process and, and didn't like the finished product. But I think, I'm, I think I am gonna like it. I think my only advice is that I picked out colors that I really liked. And so I think that's why I'm liking the finished um, or semi-finished product. So I don't think I've made any mistakes knock on wood yet wow <laughs> but um that is something that really interests me is when especially being a new knitter is how do you fix a mistake i used to just rip everything out um how do you decide what mistakes are you know um structural and need to be changed and how do you decide oh it's you know something i can live with something i can't live with you know what do i do about it how can it be fixed so I'm, I'm excited to kind of dive into that. And On see, this see sweater, learn. yeah, I, I realized as I laid it out when I was finished that one brown stitch was missing. <laughs> so I just did a duplicate stitch, if right, you don't know what is, that is. you just one way. Yeah, it's like embroidering a stitch over a stitch, and right. I fixed it. It's right. fixed. Right. <laughs> because fixing, a, dropping down and fixing that oh, stitch no. after the fact is just not, not a thing. Not happening. No. So pick up every stitch. Felicia picked out some yarn that would just be absolutely incredible which is this beach bouche oh wow yeah and i've never knitted with this it's it's absolutely wow. beautiful 100 percent lamb's wool um softer than what i'm using and would be absolutely how many gorgeous. colors are in this five five so five yeah, colors so. so picked out similar colors gorgeous that, that i picked out but i've seen some stunning stunning some people do really bright colors really bright yeah pastels mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's amazing. Yeah, and he gives lots of advice, great videos. It's just been, you know, for an eight, I think it, the pattern was eight or nine dollars. It's it's like taking a, a whole knitting course. He honestly. records his own videos to support the MCAL, right? Yes, and they're free. That's and amazing. they come to your email. And so for nine bucks, it's a whole semester of knitting techniques. And I, I really enjoyed it. That's so, so cool. Highly recommend. Great. Yeah. So one thing that came out of the pandemic that has been fantastic is I became a sock knitter, and I love knitting socks. I always have socks on the needles. Kim, I cannot. <laughs> she has made some socks. I wouldn't say two she pair. loves it. Two pair. I One gave them which, both away. Yeah, she gave to me. Um, my Christmas socks were lovingly knitted by Kim, so I'm super excited. I loved knitting them. It's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. just, I guess since I just started knitting garments for myself, I'm super right. excited to knit garments. Right. Uh, my, my sweater mojo is a little... A little on the downswing. But, but when you see, how many okay. pair of socks do you have now, hand knit? For myself? 
Probably eight or nine. We're gonna insert pictures of her her hand knit sock collection that she wears daily, and it, they're just gorgeous. I love them. So, I mean, I don't think there's anything more luxurious than wearing a pair of hand knit socks. And because I'm a process knitter, I love to buy a single skein of yarn. You only need one skein of yarn to make a beautiful pair of socks. And I bought this yarn, which is a Regia, um, I don't know if you say Regia or Regia. <laughs> I don't know. It's a merino uh, yak blend, and it allows me to buy, you know, maybe a, a pricier skein of yarn that I wouldn't buy ten skeins of to make a sweater, but I can buy one skein to make a pair of socks, and so I get to experience. Oh, this is yak, and you know, and it's just it's it doesn't really show up on the camera, but how would you describe this? It's Variegated, somewhat variegated. It's a gray, mauve, not really purple. heathered, kind of purple heathered. That's and gray. A, no, I like that. Heathered. heathered. Let's call it heathered. But let's ask Jana. <laughs> let's ask Jana what pattern she's using. Oh, so if you knit enough socks, you decide the number of stitches that you cast on that fits you best. And so for me, that's 64 stitches. So once you've determined that, you can basically write your own sock pattern and you can make whatever cuff you want. Wait, 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 that's wait, wait. Another, that's You're another knitting the sock without a pattern. For the most part. And that's another thing I love about sock knitting is that they're incredibly customizable to, you know, I cast this on on the way to Woolen Folk, which is a yarn festival we went to a couple weeks ago. And I just grabbed this because it was already in a ball so I could knit straight from the ball and grabbed a pair of needles, which are my Chow Goo size ones um, that I absolutely love. And they sell them here. And they sell them here. And I just cast on 64 stitches. On a whim, I thought I'm going to do a one by one rib. And then I just knit stockinette for about seven inches. And then I do reference, um, if I can't, if it's been a while since I made a pair of socks or, or done a, or knitted a heel, I will look at one of my trusty go-to patterns just to refresh my memory on the slip stitch heel or how to turn the heel, how to pick up stitches. I do still look at a pattern for that. Um, and but my, my favorite... You started without a pattern. Yes. And you've only been knitting two and a half years. Yes. But my favorite go-to pattern for socks, for basic socks, is... And I have to cheat here. I'm So Basic Socks by Summerlee Design Co. And her aesthetic is absolutely gorgeous. And I highly recommend that you look her up on Instagram. Her Instagram is summer.lee.nips. And she has a YouTube channel also. She has um, some chatty YouTube videos and then also some tutorials. She has tutorials for all the, all of her sock patterns. And she has many. You, you knit the Ode to Barber socks. Mm -hmm. um, I attempted to knit the Ode to Barber socks and got um, snafu'd in my, my, my striped sequins and bailed. So those socks are probably sitting around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, I love I love making socks. They're great. And I always have um, socks on the needles in my purse. Great for standing in line, waiting. Yeah, that's traffic. the great thing about socks. You can just stick yeah. them in a pocket even and, yes. and knit them. Yes, and that's a good way to keep your hands busy. Great. Yeah. So um, the last project I'm going to talk about today is um, a... Uh, I'm working on it right now. Again, I'm a monogamous knitter, so I'll knit this till it's finished. <laughs> um, I'm a polygamous but knitter. <laughs> this I did not see a sample of, but I saw a gorgeous picture on Instagram. It was, it's designed by Helga Isayer. Isayer? Is mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I say it right. Um, and I immediately contacted Felicia from the store. She must be disappointed now that I have her, her um, cell phone number because I text her at all hours. <laughs> And ask her, I send her a picture. I saw this pattern. Do you have this yarn? Can you get the pattern for me? So she did. She got me the pattern. Special order. Um, she carries Isayer yarn here, but not this specific one for the sweater. So she suggested a different one, and I absolutely love it. I have never, again, I've only knitted myself four or five garments, so I can't say I've never knitted myself something in pink, because I haven't. But yeah, um, it's super bright. I love it. The color is called Joyful, and it's Julie Asseline, how do you say it? Asseline. Asseline. Um, wool and matching mohair. 
let me look at it so I can remember. The fiber of the yarn is 75% merino, 15% cashmere, and 10% silk. And the, the mohair is 60% kid mohair and 40% silk. It is luscious. The color is amazing. It's mm -hmm. so easy to knit with. So, so easy. And I just love, after the couple years we've had knitting a color called Joyful, mm -hmm. just makes me joyful. <laughs> just love it. So, um, the construction is really interesting. Um, to get the back of the neck a little bit higher, she has you first cast on the back neck and you go back and forth and each end of each row whether it's a knit or a purl you cast on two stitches and she had a specific way she kept describing it to cast on those stitches separate the yarns and I couldn't figure out am I supposed to use just the thicker yarn to cast on so for the first few cast ons I just did a backwards loop with the thicker yarn I didn't know um, but then all of a sudden I had to cast on eight at one time and that won't work because then my mohair is left back here in the weeds and so I just kept thinking and thinking, what does she mean? And all of a sudden I realized she meant divide, separate the yarns and then you cast on like you're doing a, um, what's it called? A long tail cast on. Hmm. Cause your yarns are right there. And so you, you cast on that way and it's amazing. It's beautiful. And so you just keep going back and forth and adding your stitch markers for your raglan, um, increases. Um, the reason I fell in love, when, I, when I'm going to insert the picture, her pictures, um, this just beautiful mustard color, and the raglan, it, it's basically a basic crew neck, almost like a boyfriend sweater. It's a little oversized, not too big, but um, the, the raglan increases are these beautiful little ca delicate cables. And then, so this is the top of the sweater. If you can't see it, it's not on a big enough... Um, needle but you'll see the pictures and then the ribbing at the end this ends of the sleeves and the bottom are also these delicate little cables and when I read through the pattern I realized there's like a faux seam also where there's a beautiful little cable running down oh, I cannot wait to finish it um, but it's just it's just gorgeous um, it's called I didn't even say what it's called it's the C2 sweater and I realized that stands for cable 2 right because you're cabling two stitches and even figuring out how to do that cable, I couldn't figure it out at first. Um, so if you need help, contact me. <laughs> I can help you figure it out. Because uh, at first I, I couldn't. And um, by the way, I typically knit a, a size extra large. It just seems like this is an extra large, this is an extra large. I do not like my sweaters to fit tight. I don't add any extra shaping. I typically don't modify my patterns that much. Maybe a little shorter in the sleeves or shorter or longer in the body, but I tend to knit them just as is. I'm like afraid to modify even after, though I've been knitting for <laughs> over 30 years. But again, Jonna. Oh, hey, there you hey, are. Pearl. You want to say hi? <laughs> <laughs> this is Pearl. Hi, Pearl. Do you have a brother or sister named Knit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Um, anyway, so, um, that is the end of the projects we're sharing. Did you really officially, we're gonna share one more favorite thing. Um, did you officially share about your favorite thing? Um, Summerly Design. Yeah. Yeah, on Instagram, my favorite sock designer. And you'll see this, this episode won't be published until after her latest release, which is releasing tomorrow, but it's a, it's a pair of checked socks. They're gingham. They're blue and white gingham, and they're stunning. Oh, I saw that picture. Absolutely stunning. So she just never... Um, I'm always surprised at what she comes up with. Yeah. And her aesthetic, like I said, super bright, super colorful, easy to follow patterns, highly recommend. Yeah, so, so definitely... My, my favorite. Yeah, go visit Summerly Knits, especially yeah. if you love to knit socks. Mm -hmm. And again, I feel like I'm repeating myself. <laughs> All of these details will be in the show notes. Um, my favorite thing I'm going to share here at the end is fruity knitting. And I can't even take credit for it because Jonna told me about fruity knitting. <laughs> I was not a YouTube channel person, a podcast person. It's just not what I, pre-COVID especially. Um, but once I started watching Fruity Knitting, I was so inspired. And it's so funny, what you'll learn from our YouTube channel is we're very, very different. Very similar, and we get along really well, but we're very different. When I went back to watch Fruity Knitting, right now there's 114 episodes. They were doing twice a month. I went back literally to the very first one and binge watched all the way through. And now when they come out with a new one, I watch it right away. And Jonna, I think, 
I pick and choose. She picks. She just kind of. I think I pretty much watched them all. Yeah, but yeah. But she bounces around. Bounce around. We're just very different. <laughs> um, so I, I would recommend you go to Fruity Knitting. And um, Andrea is so inspiring. Andrea and her husband Andrew started the channel, and he basically was learning how to knit, and he was in the in the videos too. Um, and Andrea is a very experienced knitter, and it's just cute how they interact. Their daughter is in it sometimes. Her name is Madeline. I think I'm going to insert a little screenshot of them. Um, so, with me? Hmm? with me. Oh, also, <laughs> uh, John, I got to meet Andrea and Andrew. Um, I'm both knitting live in New York City in yeah. 2019. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't be there, but she. Uh, I'm going to insert a picture of her with them. They are. Every bit as lovely in person. Yeah, they're just lovely people. Yeah. Um, but very inspiring. And Andrea just, just always is, is she's very adventurous. Um, she makes mistakes. She rips them out. She tells you about all her mistakes. One time, I think it was actually a mistake in the chart, but she realized that her color work on the end of the sleeves was wrong, and she already finished one sleeve, so she literally just cut the sleeve off. And then, uh, what's it called? Stitches. Yeah, I picked up stitches or... Grafted? Grafted is what it's called. Okay. Mm -hmm. Grafted the sleeve and like finished the sleeves. Amazing. She's amazing. So she's very, very, very inspiring. She modifies a lot most of her Everything patterns to fit her body, her mm -hmm. body exactly. perfectly. Um, but they're just lovely. She does interviews, she explains about um, fibers, sheep, all things fiber. All things fiber. Mm -hmm. And it's just very and also that they're avid hikers. Mm -hmm. So beautiful scenery. Mm -hmm beautiful um, music so I highly highly we both highly recommend fruity knitting absolutely um, so yeah I recommend you start at the very beginning <laughs> and Jana will say skip around so anyway that is um, basically our episode today um, we want to thank you so much for watching. Again, we want to thank Felicia and Karen. They're milling about back here. Um, and we are going to insert pictures of their store and them. They're lovely. And um, we do want to encourage you to like this episode if you like it. And if you don't like it, I guess you can dislike it. Do the thumbs down. <laughs> but oh, we gosh. appreciate any interaction, don't yeah. we? Yeah. It's our That's very right. first experience with this. Like, using a camera. I was so grouchy two My. days ago. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out how to use the camera and learning how to edit and everything, but we'll figure it out. Um, if you have so any thank pointers. you for bearing with us. Yes, exactly. And um, please comment um, if there's anything that um, that you questions. would like. Yeah, questions. Anything you mm -hmm. want us to talk about? Um, yeah, just anything. Comment. We want to read the comments. The color of her hair is wild orchid. <laughs> it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the pictures. I don't know if I'll put any in. Last, I had blonde hair. Anyway, my hair changes all the time. Um, also, subscribe and share. Share with your knitting friends. Please, please, please. And um, I did want to talk about one more thing. Mm -hmm. Do I have time, I think? We were wondering, we want a little piece of music for the beginning and end, and I found the most perfect song. Uh, it's by Sophie Madeline, and it's called The Knitting Song. It's adorable. Yes, and we have a backup just in case, but I contacted the music producer, and they're letting us use it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put a link for you to stream, download, purchase the song. We love the song. We're so grateful that they're letting us use it. And um, it's just an adorable song. So um, the first little verse is about knitting a sweater. Mm -hmm. I just think it's so cute. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll hear that as we close. But once again, you want to say anything else? No. That's Thank it. you. Thank you very, very much for watching. Bye. Bye. You ready? I am. Can we do this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> we can't even do it now. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so adorable. Yeah. It's fine. Pretty cute. <laughs> There's kids and dogs walking by. Welcome to I can't hear what it's called. <laughs> so I'm a relatively new knitter. I've been knitting for about two and a half years. I I'm generally crafty and I did know how to crochet. Um and just how many days you must What is that? I need to drink a coffee first. <laughs> and the first thing we want to do is thank Felicia and Karen, the owners of the store. Um, they've become like friends, counselors, <laughs> helpers, guides, and um, occasionally bartenders. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Let me tell Too much information.